Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how human will, we're going to be talking about human will and the operative distinction between determinism and causality. And this, this is a very important show. Um, okay, before we get into this um, in detail, because we're going to have to, <laughs> it's going to be, it may be difficult to present, but I think I, I should be able to do it well. Um, I want to just go through why I'm doing the show, you know, and then a brief description of what we mean when we say we have free will and why we don't. Okay, um, basically, um, this belief in free will is just, not only is it completely wrong, you know, um, based on any kind of analysis, whether it's physical, logical, experiential, um, you know, it's also, um, it's harmful. It's harmful. It, it, um, it just creates unnecessary negativity. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm tired. All right. Um, now, and like, so what do we mean when we say we have um, free will? We mean that like what we do is completely up to us. Nothing is making us do anything. It's completely, completely up to us. Some people will say, well, it's partly up to us. But think about it. If, if whatever we do is partly up to us and partly a, up to something that isn't us, or better stated, isn't, isn't in our control, then surely that decision cannot be freely willed because it depends on something that's not in our control. Um, and the, the issue of control is important because some people say, well, you know, if our unconscious makes us do something as it actually makes us do everything, um, then, you know, the, the unconscious is really a part of us. So that gives us free will. But no, <laughs> I mean, like, a part of us that we can't control, that we don't even know is there, is not what we mean when we say um, we. As, as, as in free will, you know. In other words, like, if, if our unconscious, we're not even aware of and can not control at all, is making our decisions for us, then obviously um, free will is impossible. All right, so, um, I, again, before um, we continue, uh, if you want to see this episode and others that I've uploaded to the Internet, go to um, causalconsciousness.com or um, www. Um, if you Google exploring the illusion of free will, you know, that should take you right there. All right, so here's, this is, this is an important show. Um, the problem is, like, the traditional debate in philosophy it has been between determinism and free will. Now, firstly, linguistically, um, it's a poor choice of terms. Um, the free will is the right um, choice, but determinism? You know, it's like partly, and I say linguistically because like, you know, well, when you're explaining this, well, we either have a free will or we have what? A determinism? I mean, like you could say a determined will, you could, but it's really, you know, that's one of the, um, one of the weaknesses of the, the debate, the, um, of, of actually the, the scientists who understand the reality of free will, that they did not choose the proper term to, um, to counter the term free will. Like, you know, what I s say is we have an unconscious will or a causal unconscious will, which is much better than like, you know, well, there's determinism, which again, it's logically, it's linguistically not comparable to the term free will. All right, but, but there's much more to it than that. Okay. So here's why the, the, the term determinism has confused this, this understanding of, of human will and, and led many to, um, to still, you know, believe we have a free will. Um, determinism can be defined with a statement that is, a tri that, that is by a, um, a French mathematician, physicist, I believe, Simon Laplace, or Laplace, I'm not sure. Um, and he wrote, you know, that basically his statement was that if we had 
the positions and, and the momentums of every particle in the universe, if we knew, you know, the, everything related to a state of the universe, we could predict with absolute accuracy future states and we would know the past. The past would be completely known to us. Okay, that's determinism. Now here's the, um, the problem. That definition, that, that way of, of describing causality, because that's really what, it, what it's doing, um, in other words, causality is the basic process of a deterministic universe, um, that the determinism that we're describing connotes predictability. Okay, what Simon Laplace was saying was that if we know the present state of the universe completely, we can predict its future state. Now, here's the problem. Um, as subjective beings, we can't possibly know the state of the entire universe. We would have to be at every point in the universe to know the entire state of the universe. So obviously, from, from that simple understanding, we know that, um, that the future is not completely predictable, that we cannot, as subjective beings, with whatever instrumentation we might have, know the entire state of the universe. I mean, our, 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 our strongest telescopes, you know, the Hubble, the stronger ones, they can only reach so far into the universe, you know, and who knows what's out there. Okay, so, so that alone should tell you that predictability is impossible, complete predictability, but here's the thing. Um, Even though that was already known back in the early um, 1900s when quantum mechanics came about, um, back in 1925, there was another kind of uh, way of understanding why complete predictability is impossible. And it's referred to as uncertainty, um, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which simply states that you cannot simultaneously measure the position and momentum of a particle, momentum being its velocity and direction. Um, and you can't do that. The idea is like <clears throat> the more precise you get in um, measuring its position, the less precise you'll get in um, determining its momentum. The more precise you get at determining its momentum, the less precise you'll get at um, knowing its position. Okay. That's accepted. Nobody refutes that. Nobody denies that. That, that is like, <laughs> that interestingly is, is a second way of, of understanding why we as subjective beings cannot completely accurately pr predict the future. So now the, the interesting thing about Laplace's statement, which, which really gets um, lost in this debate, is that Laplace used a very important qualifier in his statement. He said, if if we had access to all the, the knowledge in the universe at one point, we could um, predict the future and know its past. He also said, you know, a statement after the, the main one that most people know, that no, we can't do that. That's beyond us. Um, maybe God can do that. Maybe a self-conscious universe can know itself and therefore know its past and future. That seems to, to make sense. But certainly we as subjective beings can't. All right, so, um, so here's the thing. Now, the term determinism, as used by Laplace, I'm not sure whether he coined it or not, connotes predictability, okay? So like it, it kind of like considers this, this question of causality, which of course will relate to human will, from the standpoint of whether it can predict or not. But, um, but as we know, even from before quantum mechanics, that just the fact that we can't possibly know everything, predict, uh, we can't measure, we can't observe everything in the universe, obviously we can't make those kinds of predictions. So, um, now what's the confusion? 
The confusion is some people say that um, that causality and um, determinism are kind of like completely synonymous. And it, it, in a certain sense they are, but in, in the, the kind of like the salient sense here, they're not. Because, um, because that causality simply states that everything has a cause. That when something happens, it is caused by something. And, and how powerful, how ubiquitous is this principle of causality in our lives? Well, think about it. If there was no causality, there would be no change in the universe. In other words, if nothing was, was being caused to happen, nothing would be happening, and the universe would be frozen. You know, nothing would happen. It would be completely motionless. So that's, that's a good way of understanding how fundamental causality is as a principle of reality. Okay, um, so now here's the, um, here's the thing with the determinism, getting back to the confusion um, that hopefully was, is beginning to be clarified now. Um, some people say, all right, determinism means unpredictability, but then they, they, um, they make a mistake at that point by thereafter concluding that unpredictability means a causality, means that it's not caused. Okay, and that's, you know, that's the mistake. You know, because, again, we've just gone through two ways, Heisenberg uncertainty and the, the lack of complete knowledge that prohibit predictability. So, um, but to get from that to, to somehow claim that it, because it's unpredictable, it's uncaused, it's simply wrong. It's illogical. It's completely illogical. Completely. <laughs> and... Uh, so, so that's, the, that's the idea. In other words, like, if you want to understand this question, um, I would, pref I would um, suggest that um, you apply the term causality, causation, you know, another form of it, cause and effect, to this, rather than use the word, the term determinism, because it just confuses people. It, it gets people on the wrong track and get some thinking of predictability and, and you know this stuff that just can't be anyhow. All right. Um, okay. And this is important because like again, um, the uh, the people, philosophers who believe in free will, um, they've um, they've had the advantage of kind of like um, you know, kind of like a, a nice sounding, a pleasant, uh, uh, fortuitous sounding um, term, free will. Who could be against free, you know? And, um, and again, on the other side is like free will against determinism. Against what? You know, what is determinism? You know, it's a concept. So, so naturally, linguistically, logically, um, those who believe we have a free will have had that advantage but they've also had the advantage of, of our not yet having come up with, um, with a proper understanding of determinism and causality and understanding that the two are, while they're essentially the same, um, they kind of connote different things. <laughs> um, okay. So... Um, Okay, I wanna, we've got a lot of time. There's about um, 12 minutes left. Um, since we're on the subject of causality, I want to like just go back to how important this is to, to this, your free will, because it's everything. I mean, there, you can't understand that we don't have a free will because we, don't have an un, because we have an unconscious. Um, that's, that may actually be a clearer way to understand it, but the traditional 
way that um, that makes sense to a lot of people that people are beginning to really awaken to now is that everything has a cause. Okay, think about it. What I just said, there's a cause to that. Okay, and then if everything has a cause, that cause has to have a, have a cause. Right? I mean, everything has a cause. If, if you know, if what I said if the cause of what I said didn't have a cause, then the cause of what I said, then what I said couldn't have happened because it wouldn't have been caused. Um, so, so that's, the, all right, so like what you have is like if all of our decisions, all of our acts, all of our thoughts, every cognition we might have has a cause, and that cause has a cause, and that cause has a cause, you have this chain of cause and effect, this causal regression. It's going from the present to the past to the further past to the further past, you know, causes receding back into the past. And, I'll, and it's, it's easy to see how, um, how this chain of cause and effect, you know, that starts with the decision, the thought, and goes back, goes back, certainly before we were born, <laughs> before the planet was created, before the universe was, you know, the known universe, 13.7 uh, billion years ago was, was created. Um, and that's, you know, that's irrefutable. That's irrefutable. All you, all you really have to understand to understand why free will is impossible is to understand causality. Yeah, it's a mystery why um, a lot of philosophers apparently don't understand it because they get the, the um, they believe that they have a free will. They believe, um, yeah, and, and uh, I don't know, trying to figure out how philosophers can come to that, you know, conclusion, that wrong conclusion that we have free will, you know, since the evidence against it is so conclusive, since causality explains it all. Um, the only thing I can come up with is that, um, in education, um, there are two ways to, um, to achieve. One is to understand what you're learning, and the second is to memorize what you're learning. And so, um, you know, my guess is the, the philosophers who, who believe that human beings have a free will have simply read that, you know, from previous authors. and, and you know, they, they haven't really understood the, 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 the topic, the concept, the question. Because that's the only way you can like, come up with the wrong conclusion. That's the only way, only way you can, um, no, I take that back. Um, one, another explanation um, that actually makes a lot of sense also is um, we are hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure. We avoid pain. So these philosophers that don't understand determinism, don't understand causality, apparently, um, they've got a, an interest in not understanding that because they take pleasure in the idea that they have a free will. They take pleasure in the idea, essentially, that they're like a, a little god you know, that what they do is up to them, because that's, you know, that's kind of like what the belief in free will means, that we're, we're little creators. We, we create our thoughts. We create our acts. And so with, with a lot of people, um, it's, not, it's not a very um, pleasant prospect to think that, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, life is a movie. Everything is, is like predetermined. Everything is causal. We're just playing it out. It's nothing is really up to us. And I can understand that. I could understand um, how some people might prefer to, um, to believe that and, and how to believe that they have free will because they'd rather not be a robot and how that belief could cloud their reasoning. You know, that, that could be one possible explanation. We've, we've drifted off the topic of, um, you know, the operative distinction between determinism and causality. And the operative distinction is that causality does not require prediction. But, but I think what we're talking about now is good because it's important to, to understand why people get this wrong. Another reason why philosophers 
still don't understand the idea that we have free will is because like they have a they have the um the premise of personal morality now this is interesting because like long ago before um i think it was 590 a.d you know there was no term free will you know it was it was free will was coined by saint augustine to um to explain morality you know he started saint augustine started with the premise well god is entirely good is all good okay so any, if we do anything wrong it's got to be up to us okay and so that that was his understanding that was his premise for concluding that we have free will now it's easy to understand how it's illogical how you can't start with a premise um like that and and you know reach the conclusion in other words um i mean is god all good because like you know in isaiah it says god created everything both good and evil um if God created an entire universe, is God, if God is the entire universe, logically it seems that God would have to be both good and bad. Now it's nice, it's, it's good to, um, to kind of like view God, the universe, as good because it makes us feel better. But, but when you apply that reasoning to a logical question like whether human beings have free will, it just doesn't, it's not the proper kind of premise. Um, you could say you could say that um i lost my train of thought okay got about five minutes um what am i thinking about um all right i don't know it's gone it's gone it's it, I, perfect illustration perfect illustration you know to do these shows i've got the knowledge in there i know this stuff okay i've read it i've thought about it i know it but this stuff is in my unconscious, okay? So, like, you know, if I'm lucky, as I usually am, thankfully, you know, when I think of something to say, I can retrieve the stuff. I can, you know, um, and, and it's being done at the level of the con- unconscious anyhow. But, but that's a good way of understanding how, how we don't have a free will. If we did, did have a free will, you could kind of, like, for example, like, let's say you were studying for a test. You would choose you would choose to memorize everything completely and then at the time of the test choose to retrieve it completely accurately um obviously we can't do that all right um oh yeah so we were trying to like explain all right no no now i just remember what i wanted to say about the morality all right so the idea is like so it was wrong for philosophers in saint augustine to conclude that there is a personal morality because again we don't have free will but then the question becomes is there a universal morality in other words if we want to ascribe morality to actions i think that's justified i mean like if we define good as what creates happiness um and evil is what creates pain then certainly you have a context a paradigm within which from which to define um the universe in a moral moralistic way god but but certainly you can't apply that to human beings. You can't say, you know, a priori, you know, axiomatically that that um that, you know, that it has to be our fault because like God is good or you know, that, that kind of a premise you can't use that in, in a logical argument. It's like starting from a from a premise that's a belief. You know, um all right. We've got about three minutes left. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, getting back to the topic, um, it's, it's really about causality. We have causal wills. We have unconscious wills. Okay, that's the thing. So it's like the causal unconscious will versus free will debate. That's what, that's what it should be. The, the sooner we get away from using the term determinism in this debate, the sooner we'll get to the point where people aren't so confused over the predictive um, connotation of determinism. And the sooner people will understand that if 
determinism, for, exa for example, relies on causality, and if causality is the fundamental process of the universe without which nothing could happen, then uh, the sooner our world will um, come to understand the, the true nature of human will. And i um, got a couple minutes. It's, um, it's kind of like, it's, it's, a, it's an irony, it's a paradox. It's like, you know, it's like the, the funny thing, the universe compelled us, is compelling most of us to believe in this illusion of free will. You know, it's not up to us. We didn't choose to believe it. We didn't choose to get this wrong. So, and, and, and what's interesting is apparently, you know, this is the 30th episode of this show. Um, there are books coming out about this um, by neurologists, by psychologists that show you step by step how free will is impossible. Um, it appears that the universe is compelling us now, is fading us, to uh, overcome this illusion. Just, just like in the past, it compelled us to, um, to understand that our world is not motionless. Our world is you know, hurtling around the sun at over 600,000 miles per hour, or that uh, our world is not flat. All right, well, I hope you, I hope you appreciate the, the operative distinction between determinism and causality and understand that prediction is impossible and so it's inconsequential to this question of, of, of human will, whether it's unconscious causal, as it actually is, or, um, or free, as, as it cannot be. You know, it's, it's, I mean, the, the term free will, I've got 20 seconds, the term free will is just incoherent. Free would mean free of any kind of like influence that we, we don't have control over. And obviously, anytime you open a book, and you read a sentence, you don't know what that sentence is going to be. That is influencing your, your life. Anyway, I hope you um, understand this. We'll be back with more explanations of why free will is impossible. Thanks.